Hey there guys, Zach here from InBeta and welcome back to another video. Now today we're taking a look at Windows 10 running on, wait for it, wait for it, wait for it. Yes, you guessed it, running on a tablet. It's been a long time coming, but Windows 10 needs to be demoed on a tablet fully. So yes, instead of doing a Windows 10 build 10,162 video, I'm doing an overall tablet experience video instead, because why the hell not? So yes, this is the Windows 10 tablet experience. I've heard a number of people claim that this tablet experience is worse or not as good as the Windows 8.1, uh, tablet experience to which I say that is completely untrue and in this video I'm hopefully going to convince those people that um, Windows 10 is actually a good viable tablet operating system. So you may have noticed there I the tablet switched straight to tablet mode I'm using a Surface 3 and I just disconnected the keyboard. Uh, you when you do that for the first time you'll be prompted down by, by the notification center asking you if you want to switch to tablet mode and whether or not it should ask you every time. Of course, I rather obviously chose don't ask me, just do it automatically because it's quicker and easier. So yes, this is the start screen. Looks just like the start menu, except on the full screen. Uh, and there's two things different from the tablet experience in Windows 8.1. Uh, firstly, the start screen scrolls horizontally. And secondly, the taskbar is constantly on the on screen so you can see down here we've got the start button we've got your uh, system clock tray etc etc it's all on screen all the time uh, now I've heard many people claim that this isn't really a good thing the horizontal start screen is ugly and the taskbar on screen takes away from the tablet experience to which I disagree the horizontal uh, sorry the vertical start screen uh, is I think it works better because if you ho hold a tablet with two hands it's easier to scroll up and down than it is to scroll left and right. On your, well, I'm right-handed, as you can see, and it's easier for me to simply flick my thumb up and down than it is to f to flick it left and right because it's the screen's big and it takes a while to get across the entire screen. If I'm going to scroll horizontally, I'm going to use my index finger and hold the tablet with one hand to do so. That's how I use the Surface R for Windows 8 tablets. With Windows 10, I, I don't have to do that. I can just hold it with two hands if I really... I can hold it with one hand as well if, you, if I must, but two hands is more comfortable and it's just easier to scroll the, the, start, uh, the start screen. The taskbar on screen is there for a reason. It, it's not really a taskbar, but it can be if you want it to be. In tablet mode, the taskbar acts more as a system status bar and a navigation bar. So let me show you what I mean. So if you open up an app here, let's open up the Mail app, you'll see that the taskbar is still on screen. Now I can open up a, a number of different things. So let's create a new email and hopefully I'll be able to go back. So now I, if I want to go back, I just have to press the back button and it will take me back to start. It's not really what I wanted to demo. Actually, a better app to demo this in, is in the settings app. So let's go into the settings app. Let's go into an area. Let's go into display advanced display settings. So here we are in an area which I want to go back to the other menu. So I just press the back button and it takes me back. If I go into a different area here, default apps, if we're going to about, maybe, no, multitasking, somewhere I can go in twice, manage optional features. So we're in here and if we want to go back, I just have to press back. That's how the navigation works. Furthermore, there's also quick access to task view, which allows you to switch between apps. And of course, Cortana, which is a system wide search functionality as well as your personal assistant. Now, without them on the screen, you wouldn't really be able to go back. If the taskbar wasn't on the screen, there would be no way to go back to your other area. Of course, you can press the cog up here, but that takes you straight to the home area, which may get annoying eventually because then you have to restart your navigation again. Furthermore, the system tray is constantly on the screen as well, meaning that you get quick access to your battery, uh, Wi-Fi, sound, notification center, and indeed the date and time. Uh, this is, again is very, it's quite convenient. So in Windows 8.1 to get access to the battery information, I'd have to swipe in from the right and go to, or, or I could just see the battery with the time. But now with Windows 10, I, I have it, I can see it constantly. And fur furthermore, if I want more information, all I have to do is tap it. So all in all, the, ta the taskbar and the start screen, are, I think, are better in Windows 10. If you must not, if you really don't like the taskbar, on screen in Windows 10, you can turn it off. If we close out of this for now, 
if we go if we come out of tablet mode and go into taskbar and uh, sorry taskbar and start menu properties we can tick auto hide the taskbar now what that does rather obviously is auto hide it it doesn't do it on the on the start screen as you can see the start screen is uh, the taskbar is still persistent but if we open up an app you see there the taskbar goes away and now you can use your app in any normal way so that's the same with every app so if we open up another app let's open up the mail app again the taskbar goes away and if you need to use the Cortana or navigation features you just have to swipe up from the bottom and Cortana is there to help you or the there and everything is pretty great and then of course if you go into another app it's going to Word it goes away again again if you need it it's just swipe up whenever and then you can access it swipe away and then it goes away so that's how that works in uh, in Windows 10 furthermore closing apps and switching between apps are also improved in Windows 10 uh, much like Windows 8.1, to close an app, you simply press the start button, or if you'd rather do it the old-fashioned Windows 8 way, you just swipe down from the top oh, and close it. So apparently I can't do that. There we go. Let's try that again. This time without making a mess of it. So let's do that again. Ready? There you go. You just swipe down to close it. And switching between apps is also way easier. So if we open up the music app, and let's open up a couple more. Let's open up mail which I think may already be open. Let's open up um, alarms. Now in Windows 8, I've, here's why I think the switcher in Windows 10 is better than it is in Windows 8. In Windows 8, to switch between apps, I'd have to continue swiping from the left to get to the app I wanted. But in Windows 10, that's not the case. In Windows 10, all you have to do is swipe in from the left once, and then you get an overview of all the apps that are open. So instead of, so you see Edge is down here, on Windows 8, I'd have to swipe four times, one, two, three, four, and then that would open up Edge. But in Windows 10, I have to swipe once, tap Edge, and now I'm running Edge. So technically in Windows 10, multitasking is a lot quicker than it is on Windows 8.1. Also, let's turn the taskbar back on, because I'm not done talking about the taskbar yet. Okay, there we go. So let's go back into tablet mode. Now the taskbar can, as I said at the beginning of the video, the taskbar can also be used as a navigation or, or as a normal taskbar in tablet mode. If you if you hold it and select show app icons, you can see it now begins showing all of your open apps, much like it does on a desktop. But what this actually does is make switching between apps and multitasking even easier than it is from the left hand switcher. Task view, sorry. So now if I want to open an already open app, I just have to tap it. And it launches. If I want to switch to edge, I just tap edge. If I want to switch to the alarms, I just tap alarms. If I want to switch to mail, I tap mail. If I want to open the store, I just tap on the store icon. And I don't even have to go through any like gestures or anything. I just have to tap it. And it just works much like you would expect. So technically, the taskbar in tablet mode is makes multitasking even easier. And I know that's hard to believe, as many claim that the taskbar has no place in tablet mode. Well, I proved you all wrong. It absolutely does. But yes, the tablet, the taskbar is very helpful and convenient, but also can be hidden if you really don't want it. Let's turn those off for now. So the apps list, the apps list is easily accessible from the start screen. You just tap it, you tap this icon down here and then the apps list is easily available on your left hand thumb. You just use one hand to scroll up and down it. And when you're ready to open an app, you just get to it and open it. Easy as that, not much to it. The hamburger menu up here gives you your most used apps as well as quick access to your account settings as well as a number of pinned areas down here such as file explorer settings and power options although power options can be accessed straight from the start menu start screen as well got jump lists which which work much like you would expect and opening up win32 apps which is the next thing i want to talk about is pretty good so as you can see here i'm in and it's full screen by default and that's because in tablet mode every app is treated like a tablet app so it will operate in full screen i can do the normal gestures i can swipe in from the left and get access to my multitasker at multi sorry task view switcher i can also close apps just by swiping down on them and that will close file explorer let's open file explorer back up and of course in windows 10 you can also use split view much like on windows 8.1 so if i want to multitask with two apps, I can absolutely do so, like that. 
there we go i now have file explorer and email going at the same time and much like on windows 8 i can adjust what app takes what screen is set real estate so everything works much like you would expect nothing's really changed from windows 8.1 in this aspect except desktop apps are now treated like tablet apps which is a good thing definitely so this all works still the same everything is great i can open up this and i should open up the photos app mm -hmm. so you can see you know that there let's, let's close it down of course in windows 8.1 you have the charms area which gives you access to the start search etc etc but in windows 10 you have the action center which is your notification center as well as quick access to a number of system functionalities so as you see, I've got notifications in the Action Center, such as settings here and Windows Feedback. I can either clear them all or just swap them away individually. And down here, I get access to a bunch of things down here, which I can customize. So if we go into Settings, System, Notifications and Actions, you can see here that I can adjust what comes up here. There are a number of things to choose, but they all work pretty great. And search, search is constantly on screen now, such as with Cortana. So you can see I can search system. So if I want to search for the device manager, device manager, I can see there and then I can easily launch the device manager. There we go. That's the device manager working. And of course, Cortana is also Cortana. So I can ask her to do a number of different things for me, such as what the weather's like. What's the weather like today? The forecast shows mostly cloudy skies with a high weather, of 77 and a low of 67. And yes, so that's Cortana in a nutshell. Also, with the Windows 10 mobile and Windows 10 on the desktop, the touch experience is pretty similar in the sense that all the functions do the same thing. So Cortana does the same thing. Uh, the task switches looks the same as it does on Windows 10 mobile. And the back button also performs the same function. So if we hold the back button, you see that task switcher comes up and that's pretty great and of course if you're in an app that doesn't have uh, any more area to go back pressing back will just close it much like a windows phone again or sorry windows 10 mobile so this everything is the same i guess the experience is the same across tip tablet and pc and that's the idea here with windows 10 and the tablet experience does not suffer from that not at all of course, if you want to be productive uh, without a keyboard, you can absolutely do so with the mobile office apps. If we launch an office app here, I'm going to attempt to type on touchscreen keyboard because we all know how good that is. So let's try. Let's do the following. The quick brown. Oh, that's a wow. OK, so we try that again. The quick brown fox jumped. <laughs> I can do this. I'm going to try and do it. Right, let's, let's actually put it on the kickstand. Let's try it on the kickstand. Ready? It's because the mic's in the way. I can't actually see what's going on. Right. Are you ready for this? The quick... Nope. I can't get the, the start button. The, uh, uh, the space bar. The quick brown fox jumped over the lazy dog ah oh, that's that's not bad over was wrong but ah uh, that's a first touch typist i think but yes of course you can be productive with tablet mode i can add pictures maybe if i have any pictures let's add the screenshot i can move it about spin it upside down do all this crazy formatting with it etc etc move it about do all the good things you can usually do with word all right here within tablet mode Let's come out of reading view. It's going back into... No, it's not what I wanted. But yes, of course, you can do printing, all that other good stuff right from here. Of course, I can share it with friends. I can send feedback via the feedback app, but that's not really anything to do with the app itself. Of course, I've got the new Clippy function thing, tell me what to do, which just allows, if I don't know how to do something, I can just ask the app and the app will tell me. And just as how productivity works on the touch screen mode and of course you can also browse the internet and browsing the internet is of course one of the good things in this because it works great and the navigation is always on screen so you can just easily access it go into new tabs etc etc switch back up and down and go into annotation mode and draw all over everything so draw over that draw over that so yes the tablet experience on windows 10 is pretty good and i know many people have said otherwise i disagree with them obviously uh i just say if you want to just try it out on a tablet before you judge uh this i reckon this is one of the best tablets operating systems i've ever used uh because of its 
its ability to be a tablet operating system, I guess. So I don't feel like I'm being taken out of the tablet oper- uh, experience with Windows 10, unlike I did with Windows 8.1. If I launched a Win32 app, I'd always be taken to the desktop and it seemed like a different environment. In Windows 10, it all seems the same. Opening up Google Chrome will open up full screen and it will work much like you'd expect a tablet operating system, a tablet app to work like. So it's all pretty good. I think Windows 10 has potential when it comes to um, using it in a tablet. Before you judge, make sure you try it. And yeah, so thanks so much for watching, guys, and I shall see you in the next one. Bye-bye.